Saudi Arabia can leave Russia without money to wage the war in Ukraine. Vladimir Putin would not have invaded Ukraine if uh, Donald Trump had been the president of the United States, according to the former UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Meanwhile, Israel continues its ground operation in Lebanon and try to counter, attack and destroy Hezbollah. So why might Russia uh, don't have enough money to continue the war in Ukraine? And how could Donald Trump prevent the full-scale aggression from the Russian Federation? So we have a new article uh, by Politico, Politico reported that Saudi Arabia can um, can reduce Russia's revenues, Russia's oil revenues, and it could be a huge blow to the war-footing economy of Russian dictator Vladimir Putin. So uh, Saudi Arabia is frustrated that other countries uh, producing oil uh, does not cut the amount of oil which is which is going to be produced. That's why Saudi Arabia will. Uh, is planning to expand its oil production to rise, increase its oil production and um, uh, it would cause a dramatic drop in the oil prices. It would be really harmful for Russian dictator Vladimir Putin and for the Kremlin because it would leave Russian economy without enough money to continue the war in Ukraine, to continue this illegal barbaric aggression against the Ukrainian nation. And Saudi Arabia will try to do that in the nearest future and according to the uh, recent analysts of recent experts, Russia will lose 20 billion dollars in the oil revenues. It's like 1%, it is uh, 1% of Rus Russia's GDP. According to Politico, that's why it would be the huge blow for Russian dictator Vladimir Putin and his economy. So we are waiting for this decision from Saudi Arabia to happen in the nearest future. Also, uh, on the other hand, it would be beneficial for Saudi Arabia because by expanding, by, by rising, increasing its oil production, uh, Saudi Arabia will receive more revenues. Uh, even if uh, even if uh, the prices for oil drops drop down, uh, that's why it's really a good decision for Saudi Arabia, and we are waiting for this, for this decision right now to happen. Also, according to the recent entry of Boris Johnson on the Telegraph, Russian dictator Vladimir Putin would not have invaded Ukraine if Donald Trump had been the president of the United States. Boris Johnson said this in his interview on the Telegraph. However, he did not specify he he did not specify uh, why he was thinking so. Also, he said that Donald Trump could Donald Trump could be tougher, uh, could could have tougher attitude to Russian dictator Vladimir Putin. He said that he would he could be tough with Putin and could. Uh, even increase the support of Ukraine. Earlier we have heard some interesting statements for Boris Johnson. He said that Trump will not uh, will not remove support for Ukraine. He will not suspend the support for Ukraine. Uh, he will increase the support of Ukraine if he understands that it is not uh, possible to negotiate in good faith with Russian dictator Vladimir Putin. So it's like interesting thoughts from former UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Also, he said that Russia uh, would not invade Ukraine in 2014 and in 2022. Uh, also, he said that um, Donald Trump uh, would provide Ukraine with javelin uh, missiles uh, in his previous term. However, uh, John Bolton, this person was the reason why Donald Trump provided Ukraine with anti-tank missiles, javelin. Uh, even that Donald Trump did, what, did not want to do that. Uh, however, we have heard some uh, interesting conflicting statements from Donald Trump last week. He said that um, even the war's deal would be better for Ukraine that, than uh, what Ukraine has right now. Uh, despite the statement he met with President Zelensky, he said that President Zelensky is a good man, is a good leader. That's why now we do not understand what would Trump do in case of his presidency. Maybe even uh, Donald Trump does not understand what he's planning to do with Ukraine if he's if he if he's elected. But 
we have to wait to his statement after the general election if he wins the general election because now it's like a, a rally rhetoric uh, campaign rhetoric which uh, would not um, particularly establish his policy which would not be a part of his policy in case of his presidency meanwhile we have a new results of the opinion polls and kamala harris again has a lead over donald trump in two percent so according to the latest polls by the hill pbs news and other media outlets kamala harris uh, has a support from 50 percent of the american voters at the same time donald trump has support from only 48 percent of the voters or also 51% of Americans have a negative attitude towards Trump and only 47% of Americans have a negative attitude towards Kamala Harris. At the same time, uh, Kamala Harris is ahead of Trump among uh, women. Also, 58% uh, of women supports Kamala Harris and only 40% only of women uh, supports Donald Trump. So Kamala Harris in, is gaining even more ground and some uh, experts, opinion polls experts say that uh, Kamala Harris really can win this election polls because he, uh, she has a fair chance to win this general election and to beat Donald Trump. Meanwhile, the new NATO Secretary General Mark Rutte visited Kyiv and met with President Zelensky. He said that Ukraine would be his priority in his work in uh, in NATO. President Zelensky met with uh, Mark Rutte. Also, he said that uh, he, he would like to see Western allies to support Ukraine as they support Israel. He said that NATO allies uh, should try to support Ukraine actively and uh, should try to intercept Russia's drones and ballistic missiles in the air over Ukraine as they do so in the air of Israel. Uh, also, uh, there is a other conflicting statement from Pentagon. Pentagon officials said that uh, Ukraine and Israel are two different battlegrounds. So there are lots of fears of escalations in the White House because uh, President Biden is afraid of possible nuclear escalation from the Russian Federation. That's why he does not support such allies intercepting Russian ballistic missiles in the air over Ukraine, over uh, our country. Uh, also, there have been some reports that the um, Israeli army warned about the evacuation and they continue their uh, ground operation in Lebanon. This night, Israel conducted airstrikes on Lebanon and tried to kill another head of Hezbollah group. Uh, also, there are other reports that suggest that Israel would try to continue its ground operation deep inside Lebanon and would try to fully remove Hezbollah to destroy this uh, organization and its uh, leadership. However, uh, Financial Times reported that um, Western allies urged Israel not to retaliate uh, to Iran, not to retaliate to recent strike by Iran. They would like to see a light, uh, a slight retaliation uh, uh, they would like to see a re the new attacks on the military infrastructure of Iran, but not uh, attacks on uh, Iranian nuclear site. That's why President Biden urged Benjamin Netanyahu to retaliate only, uh, to try to destroy only Israeli uh, military assets, but not Israeli nuclear sites. And that's the position of the U.S. government, of the U.S. President Joe Biden, that's why we'll continue to analyze the situation and try to uh, move forward with this and to analyze to cover the recent statement from the Israeli and American government. Meanwhile, the U.S. CIA tries to get more support among the Russian people, tries to expand its campaign to recruit informants in the Russian Federation and other authoritarian states. CIA reported that uh, its recent campaign to recruit more people in Russia was a successful one. Earlier, CIA reported that uh, CIA published a Russian language video on Twitter and tried to per se to convince uh, more Russian people to uh, share intelligence, share information with the CIA. Now we have seen new video from CIA 
with the instructions in uh, three different languages in the Chinese for C and Korean to, uh, on how to, it's, it's possible to try to reach out to the CIA on the safe source of information and it seems like CIA tries to gain more information, to obtain more information about the situation in Russia and that's good news for Ukraine because CIA also shares its, its intelligence with Ukraine to help Ukraine's war effort and to help Ukraine to better defend its, itself against Russia's illegal and uh, brutal aggression. That's all for today. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay with us on YouTube and uh, glory to Ukraine.